Recently, Iran's second-largest carmaker Saipar has signed a contract to export three models of cars to Russia and Belarus, according to the official Iranian news agency IONA. The models are Shahin, Kweek and Sena, and the Iranian company will export 45,000 cars to the two countries in a contract worth 450 million euros, $49.78 million. Many people think it is incredible that after the withdrawal of many car companies from Russia, coupled with the Western cutoff of parts, the gap in the Russian auto market has been filled by Iran. Those who think so may still have little understanding of the development of Iran's auto industry or even the whole manufacturing industry. Today I will talk to you about the rapid development process of Iran's auto industry and manufacturing industry. For those of you who like our channel, please subscribe and turn on the little bell so you won't miss our updates. Now let's get started. The development of Iran's automobile industry began with the accession of King Reza Khan to the throne in 1926, when Iran began to rapidly promote urbanization and industrialization, which accelerated the import of European and American cars. In the 1960s, many European and American car manufacturers such as Fiat, Leyland, Mazda, General Motors, etc., moved into Iran to set up West Asian car factories. At the same time, Iran itself established many large automobile companies, such as Iran National, the largest automobile company in Iran, the predecessor of IKCO Kadro, Saipar, the second largest automobile manufacturer in Iran, Pars Kadro, the third largest automobile manufacturer in Iran, Moratab Industrial Manufacturing Company, Iran's first car sales and production company, Iran Cave, Iran's major commercial vehicle company, and Zamyad Company. The first localized small car was the Peking small car launched by Iran National in 1967, which was also the first generation of Iranian national car. At one time, the annual production exceeded 100,000 units and six versions were launched, luxury, pickup, standard, GT, cab and auto shift, comparable to Santana, Fukang and Shirley in China in 1980s and 2000s. Until today, there is no scrapping system for old cars in Iran, and many cities can still see the old Peking cars. Of course, the car was not patented by Iran itself, not even as a reverse development, but belonged to the British Roots Group at the time. The latter gave Iran National the license to produce its own Aro sedan and the corresponding parts, but there was a quota, 6,000 units per year. Of course, if Iran really only made 6,000 cars per year, the Pecan would not have become the first generation of Iran's national car. In the same year, Pars Kadro got the license for the American car company's famous classic Rambler and started manufacturing it in Iran under the new names Arya and Shahin. Saipar followed suit the following year, bringing in the famous Dian line from Citroën and started building the car. In this way, Iran's automobile industry has developed step by step until today. Automobiles are the second largest industry in Iran after oil. Back in 2015, Iran topped the list of one of the largest car manufacturing countries in the Middle East with an annual production of 980,000 cars. The development of the Iranian automotive industry can be broadly divided into three phases. Phase 1, between 1950 and 1980, the period of formation of automobile assembly industry. Phase 2, between 1970 and 2000, a period of development and prosperity. Iran's automobile manufacturing industry was not only close to self-sufficiency around 2000, but also continued to further expand export opportunities. 1989 to 1994 was also Iran's first five-year plan, which indicated that priority would be given to the development of oil, gas, steel, and automobile industries. Phase 3, from 2005 to the present, Iranian car manufacturing entered the global market. In 2017 Iran ranked 12th in the world in terms of car sales. The current head companies of Iranian cars are Iran Kadro Auto Group, IKCO, and Saipar Auto Group, Saipar, which we mentioned at the beginning of the video and which exports cars to Russia is the second largest Iranian car manufacturer Saipar. The history of this development seems to be that many brands from Germany, France, Japan, and Korea such as Peugeot, Kia, Nissan, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, etc., are the guests of the local Iranian car companies. In the early 2000s, the Peugeot 405, 
Peugeot 206 and a four-door car with separate luggage compartment for the Iranian market entered the country in quick succession. These three cars were not only bearing the Peugeot badge, but the 405 was also localized with Iranian characteristics. The 2000s were also a high point for the Iranian auto industry. Not only did the local government stop intervening to curb car production, but it also started to take a hard hit on all imported cars. You know, in the 1990s, the local car import tariff was as high as 300% in order to support domestic cars, and only in 2005 was it reduced to 100%. With such a strong policy, the localization rate of Iranian cars as well as components has increased greatly. In 2006, there were more than 30 auto plants, 400 auto parts companies and 230,000 workers in the auto parts industry in the country. In these years, Iran's two largest local automotive companies have 100,000 employees, and 700,000 people are engaged in automotive-related activities. A related industry, the automotive industry is already the main driver of the Iranian economy and is second only to the energy sector. Combined with inhumanly low fuel prices, highway tolls and parking fees, it has become a no-brainer for Iran's middle class to buy a car. For example, in Tehran, the capital of Iran, the number of private cars exceeded 3 million back in 2005, and the population of the city is 12 million, one private car for every four people. It was also during those years that Iranian car brands, which were at their high point, started their plans to go abroad. IKCO, for example, came to China with its national car Iran Mustang and Iranian Peugeot 206 at the 2006 Beijing Auto Show to talk about a joint venture. It had some serious discussions with Cherry, but now it seems that nothing has been achieved. A year later IKCO successfully entered the Russian market, but after only three years, it withdrew because of the lack of competitiveness in terms of style and price. Starting in 2012, the United States and the European Union launched a round of all-round sanctions against Iran more than a round of high. The total blockade in the industrial field, from technology to components, has led international car manufacturers of all sizes to give Iran everything but goodbye support. Iran's automotive industry, for its part, began to stagnate and derail from the world average. In the past two years, in order to make their products look less single and stale, Iranian car companies of all sizes can only keep refurbishing those few old cars on hand. This has also greatly discouraged young Iranians from choosing a car. The streets are full of old Pecan, old 405, and over 25 years old cars are everywhere. Coupled with the fact that there is no local vehicle scrapping policy, 85% of the cars still running on the roads in the region have reached or exceeded 15 years of life. Although the Iranian majors say that the rate of self-production is more than 80%, but some key components still have to rely on imports. For example, airbags, engine cylinders related to pistons, cylinder heads, especially computer chips including control units, sensors, etc. This forced them to retreat to nearby countries such as India and Turkey to seek new suppliers on the one hand, and to start a truly independent R&D program on the other but there was little success in either direction. For a long time, the annual production of Iranian cars did not even touch 1 million. Of course there is a third way, seeking Chinese cooperation. The rapid development of Iran's auto industry and China is also closely related. The Iranian economic daily Donny Ektasad has reported that Iran's commercial vehicle production shows a significant increase in 2022, mainly thanks to an increase in the production of trucks vans, and tractors. The rise of the truck market builds on Iran's strong development of its infrastructure network, but Iran's automotive market demand is growing even faster, still requiring large imports of complete vehicles and parts. Cars from China such as JAC, Dongfeng and Golden Dragon are running through the streets of Iran today. Back in 2001, Yin Tong Yu, then deputy general manager of Cherry, talked for five minutes with a Middle Eastern man on the side of the road in front of Sayak in Shanghai. Just five minutes later, the prologue of Chinese auto brands going abroad was opened. I don't know if anyone still remembers that Cherry QQ's advertisement could be seen everywhere in the streets of Iran at the beginning of this century. In 2003,
Cherry partnered with Iranian SKT to build a main plant it brings the supply chain advantages of a local plant for Chinese auto companies going abroad, while allowing for faster response to local consumer demand. 2021, Cherry invested in an automotive industrial park in Bam, Kerman Province, Iran, which went into production and operation. In general, the entry of Chinese automobiles into the Iranian market is accelerating, including Pentium, Brilliance, BYD, Chang'an, Cherry, Dongfeng, Geely, Hamer, Havel, JAC, Lifan and other Chinese auto companies selling vehicles in Iran through cooperation with local Iranian companies. Chinese-related companies may have several opportunities in Iran's auto market in the future. First, based on the continuous improvement of Iran's infrastructure, the acceleration of urbanization, and the rapid development of Iran's e-commerce and outbound business, which will be favorable to the heavy truck industry. Secondly, although Iran is a major oil country, new energy vehicles are being strongly supported by the Iranian government based on the layout of new energy development under double carbon. In the future, with the development of Iran's communication infrastructure, mobile applications, and information technology, Iran will see the explosion of telematics industry like China. Today, under the Belt and Road Initiative, China and Iran are exchanging products, equipment and technology in various fields such as energy, communication, and automobile. Unlike China's oil-poor and gas-poor natural resources, Iran has abundant oil and gas resources in the traditional energy track, as the only country in the world that straddles two major oil and gas-rich regions. In the new energy track, Iran is located in the solar radiation belt of the Middle East and has a world-famous wind tunnel. In February 2023, Iranian President Li visited China and China and Iran jointly issued the joint declaration. China and Iran will further promote cooperation in the fields of energy, communications, and automobiles. Iran is actually an externally oriented manufacturing industry. Most of its manufacturing products, including oil, gas, chemicals, mining, and automobiles, are exported in large quantities to international markets. The years of embargo have given Iran a self-sufficient infrastructure and a largely complete industrial system. For example, like Russia, Iran's chip industry is to some extent not too constrained by foreign parties. Even if they are not integrated into the global industrial chain, the key components of the relevant products are not internationally competitive in terms of quality, but in Iran, practicality always comes first. In addition to exports to Russian drones and gas turbines, exports of special alloys produced in Iran are also exported in large quantities to other countries, cars are also exported to Azerbaijan, Egypt, Russia, Syria, Algeria, and other countries. Iran's manufacturing industry is centralized and mainly controlled by a few large state-owned enterprises. The monopolistic state-owned enterprises, including Iranian automobile manufacturing company, Iranian steel company, Iranian petrochemical company, Iranian mining company, etc., ensure the autonomy and control of their manufacturing industries. What's more, unlike most developed countries, which have an increasingly aging population, Iran's population is trending younger, with data showing that as of September last year, Iran's population was about 85.02 million. According to statistics, Iran's population under 35 years old accounts for 64% of the total population. Iran is also accelerating its urbanization process, and as of 2016, the percentage of Iran's urban population has reached about 72.5%. As a country with a large population with a very young age structure, there is no shortage of labor in Iranian industry, only a lack of skilled personnel. So the answer to the question of why Iran can export cars to Russia is slowly emerging. Behind the veil of Iran as an energy exporting country is its hidden production capacity, its consumer market potential as a young country with a large population and its abundant manufacturing labor force. At present, Iran is one of the major markets for China's overseas engineering contracts, driving Chinese manufacturers to export complete sets of equipment and electromechanical products, while also bringing advanced technology, equipment and professional and technical personnel to Iran. In the future, the clearest signal of multi-win or first in the field of new energy. Let's wait and see together.